QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Export balance sheet to Excel. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process we do every time. Maximizing the homepage to the gray area. View drop down. Noting we have the hide icon bar and open windows checked off. Open windows open on the left hand side. We're not going to be opening up the balance sheet and income statement the way we normally do because we're going to go into the memorized reports and open up reports that we have memorized in prior presentations. Noting that if you haven't memorized the reports in prior presentations, you can simply open up a balance sheet report, follow along from there as we export the reports to Excel. So let's go to the reports drop down. We're going to go into the report center. And within the report center, I'm going to maximize it because it always unmaximizes for some reason. But we're going to then go to the memorized reports. And these are the reports that we have memorized in the past. Again, if you don't have these, you can just open up a standard balance sheet. That's okay. I'm going to then make a list format. Now, in prior presentations, we've been thinking about how we can set up a system possibly to be providing and grouping reports on a periodic basis to a particular client, possibly monthly, yearly, quarterly, and so on. One way to do that is possibly to format the reports from a basic balance sheet. We're only looking at the balance sheet reports so far. We'll look at other reports in the future and then customizing those reports into what, what we want to be providing on a periodic basis, such as a standard balance sheet, summary balance sheet, possibly a comparative balance sheet, and then trying to memorize those reports in an order so that then we can print them out periodically as easily as possible and provide them to our client in a very systematic type of way. So first of all, let's open up this summary balance sheet report. This is the first one that we might like put on top of the reports because it's a summary report. You can also get to a similar report by going to reports drop down, company and financial down here. And this is the balance sheet summary. And so then we're gonna try to group this stuff together. If I was to give this to a client or try to group this for a supervisor, we could of course print them out, which we talked about in prior presentations. We can save them as a PDF, which we've talked about in prior presentations. We can email them, which means you would have to have a link to the email or your email account set up within QuickBooks. But even then you might have to send separate reports or, or, or you might be able to attach all the reports on one email. But now what we would like to do is export to Excel. When we export to Excel, there's a couple reasons you might do that. One is you might export to Excel because you want to add more formatting to the report. So possibly there's more formatting that you would like to do above and beyond what can be done in QuickBooks. Possibly you want to change like the titles, like the assets or current asset, those titles. Uh, and you can't do that in QuickBooks, so you can export it. You could do a format like that. Sometimes you use some of these reports to export to Excel to then build something from it. So you use that as the baselines for your projections into the future, possibly for budgeting. And we also might export to Excel because we can then use Excel to group the reports together into one PDF file using the Excel printer, which that's what we will do this time. To get an idea of the end result, what we're looking for, if I go into our folder, this is where I'm gonna put the reports. We put them into by company, Rock Castle Construction. And then we have these reports here. These are us saving them in a prior presentation as PDF files, which we would then have to attach to an email or possibly put them on a cloud drive, like a OneDrive or, uh, or something like that. Now we're gonna save the Excel reports here and then we're going to use those Excel reports to basically combine all the reports together in one report 
using a PDF printer, which you can you can use a cute PDF printer. If you Google cute PDF printer, that's the one that I use. It's free. I'm not advertising. I'm not affiliated to them or anything, but that's going to be a tool that we will use and you can typically get a free PDF printer to help with that process. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go back to QuickBooks and we're just going to export all of these to Excel. The exporting process will be something like this. We're going to go to the Excel dropdown, create a new worksheet versus update existing worksheet. Now, this time we're going to be creating a new worksheet because we don't have any existing worksheet. So I'm going to click that first one and then we've got our options create new worksheet. So we've got in new workbook. So a workbook is kind of like the word document versus the word, you know, programs or, or versus a sheet. So that's the, the file would be that and or in existing workbook. We're going to open a new workbook this time. Update an existing worksheet. No, we're not going to use that at this point because we're not going in the worksheet or the actual sheets within uh, the workbook which is the file itself, replace an existing worksheet or create a comma separated value. That's going to be a .csv. So you could export it as a CSV uh, type of file, which is kind of like you can think of it kind of like an unformatted Excel file. You also have some advanced options here. Let's take a look at them. So keep the following format options from QuickBooks. So we've got the fonts, uh, we've got the colors. Now, when you export it, sometimes you you may not like the the fonts that are that are going to be exported, or possibly even the colors, because maybe you're going to be using the Excel uh, formatting. So sometimes you might actually remove that. I'm going to keep those two on, however. Space between columns is off by default. Row height, so I'm going to keep that on by default. Excel options turn on the following Excel features: auto fit set column width to display all data. So when you have the widths of the column, once exporting to Excel, it will uh, expand the columns to fit the data that's going to be put within them. So I'll keep that. Freeze panes. This is one I always would like to uncheck. That turns on the freeze panes, which locks like the header rows when you export, but it kind of makes the formatting a little bit difficult to deal with. So typically I will remove that. So make sure you do that or else you're going to have to deal with that freeze panes every time. Show grid lines. I like to show the grid lines instead of just having the white report personally so I can work in Excel and see the grid lines. Auto outline allows collapsing and expanding. So if you want to use the collapsing and expanding on like uh, the, the carrots here, then maybe you, you choose that. We're not going to use it because we're using it to create an end product of creating a PDF file ultimately. So auto filtering allows custom data filtering and then include QuickBooks export guide worksheet. This gives you a tab at the front of Excel every time you export, which is kind of annoying after a while because you just want the data. So typically I would like to uncheck that. That'll save you some time from deleting an extra file every time. Create backup worksheet during the update. I'm going to keep that as off. Printing options, show report header uh, on print uh, report only. So the header, when it goes to Excel, maybe on the header portion, not in its own cell like in Excel. So we'll see that when we export it. I'll keep that as the default on printed report and screen and then repeat row labels on each page. And I'll keep that and we'll say OK. So let's go ahead and export. Obviously, you need Excel in order for QuickBooks to be able to link to Excel and open it up. Note here as well, this because I've expanded the screen, Excel, the, the working space looks kind of small. The ribbon is huge because we're working at a 150 size of the screen. So bear with us because I think that's easier to see at least. But there we have it. So there's the, there's the information. So if I go to the second tab here, I'm going to use these tabs down below. There's normal. There's the page layout. If I go to the second tab, there's the header. So that's where the header is up top. It's not in a cell. It's in the header section. And then uh, also, if you go to the view tab, if you didn't do that split window thing, you would have to deal with the fact that you'd have split windows here which I think is this icon up here. The icons are a little squished together because again, the ribbon got squished because I'm on 150 of the size. Going back to the first tab, going back to home tab, and then I'm going to go back to this view. So there it is. I'm not going to go to a lot of formatting once we're uh, within Excel. We might talk more about how we can format certain things later. Right now, I just want to note that it fits on one page at this point in time. 
and we can check that by going to the file tab over here and I can say let's go to the print area and take a look at the preview now notice it's, it looks a little bit different here because it is going to be shifted to the left because that's how it fits in Excel if we compare that then to QuickBooks and I look at the print preview here and look at the report then they centered it right so when it goes to Excel it pushes to the left because the Excel's are going to be left aligned so so you could format in Excel and, and adjust some of that stuff and center it if you so choose but again I'm just going to be working here to uh, to to try to put everything on one page that's going to be our general goal at this point with the Excel uh, exporting so I'm going to name this tab I'm just going to call it balance sheet summary or something like that and so there we have it I'm going to save it to the location we want the location is here so I'm just going to copy this location and I'm going to save it file save as and I'm going to call it something like let's paste it here there it is I'm going to call it something like month end reports that's what we named it up top so I'll call it that I'm going to say save it because I'm going to put all the other reports in here too so month end reports month end reports I wanted that here month and reports and save it I can't go in because then it's going into the thing all right let's put it here month and reports save it okay so there we have it now all the other ones are going to be saving to another tab in this report typically I'll close it out when I save the other ones and then let's go back to the reports on the left hand side and I'm going to open up the next one which is a balance sheet standard now if you don't have the memorized reports you can go to the reports drop down company and just open up a balance sheet standard and then I'm just going to export this one in a similar fashion but this time we're going to go to Excel and I'm going to say create a new worksheet because that's the sheet within the workbook but then in the next option I'm going to change it I want to go to an existing workbook and then I'm going to go into this workbook and there it is that's the one I want uh, month in report so I'm going to double click on that and now it should open that workbook up and then create a new worksheet within that workbook so there it is I'm going to maximize it I'm going to grab this sheet by left clicking on the sheet and holding down and drag it to the right so drag it to the right so then I'm just going to call this a standard BS I double clicked on it so I can rename it double click on this thing to rename it and call it BS if I go to the second tab I can see it's got the header that looks good going to the first tab that uh, looks good again we could do further formatting here if we so choose like we could you know if I want to remove the account numbers or something like that I can go through here and remove the account numbers and so on uh, if I go up top to the file tab I could then say let's say we're going to print this thing and notice it prints one page or one uh, Excel sheet at a time but we could change that I could say I want to print the entire workbook and now it'll print the summary balance sheet and then the second balance sheet so that's a way that we can use the printing option to now put both of these things on the same file and then we can change the printer to the cute PDF printer which I believe is a free printing option you could Google search it if you so choose so that when we print it it will not go to an actual printer but create a PDF file allowing us to put all the reports on one file allowing us to then you know possibly email this to someone with one attachment or put it into a cloud drive as one file instead of multiple files so if I go if I go back we could do this again I'm gonna close this back out and let's do this for the rest of them I'm gonna to go to the report center again and open up the third one this is a comparative balance sheet do the same process Excel drop down create new worksheet and then I'm gonna put it into an existing workbook it should be going where we want it now it looks like it is and then I'm gonna say export it again it'll open up the workbook of the workbook yeah and then put a new worksheet within it maximizing I'm going to drag it to the right and there it is and then I'm going to check it by going to the second tab here usually I go to this view and see now this one doesn't quite fit on one page on portrait 
So now we got to think, if I go back on over, it gives me this little dotted line. I can say, okay, is there any way I can fix this? Now, one way you could fix it is you can try to force it to fit on one page, but you don't really want to, uh, you don't really want to change the, the size of, of the font, meaning I could go here and when I, when I print it, I can, try to, I can try to force it to fit on one page by using the scaling options, fit to one page, fit all columns, all columns on one page. But that changes the size of the font and it could get kind of messy. So if I can not do that, I usually would prefer not to. So before I do that, first I'll try to minimize the columns, making possibly this column a little bit skinnier, for example, might get pretty close. We could bring that in a bit more. And if that doesn't work, the next thing would be to go possibly to landscape. So I could make this report landscape. The problem with landscape, now I've made it landscape and it fits on one page wide, is that if you were to, if you were to print this thing, now you're gonna have this one report that's, that's going landscape. But if you send it to someone as a PDF and they're gonna look at it on their computer, then the PDFs are getting to the point where now they can orient it as if it's a vertical thing, even though it's, it's printed landscape. So if they're gonna watch it digitally or open it digitally, then it's probably not too big of a problem to go to landscape. If we're gonna print it out, it can be causing some issues. So before I go to landscape, again, that's my last resort. I would try to, I would try to squish it in and see if we can make anything a little bit smaller or cut down some things. You could cut down some of the indentations over here. Like I, I might do something like this, like move this whole column over and say, well, I don't really need this last column because those are bold. Maybe I move those over to here. I'm just gonna, and then maybe I, maybe I remove all of column A. Say A is not needed, delete. And then now that fits on one, one page landscape. And of course you can make these smaller too. So in any case, there it is, we'll save it and close it and go to the next report. I'm gonna say, okay, let's go to the report center number four. So now we've got the, another comparative balance sheet. So let's go ahead and say we want to export it and create a new worksheet. We're gonna create a new worksheet in an existing workbook. I'll just, it should be going to the same spot. Now bear with us until the end here because I, I do wanna export this to a PDF file to show you the, the benefit of being able to export this. Providing this Excel worksheet to a client is probably not what we're gonna do. We might use this Excel worksheet to then create the PDF file. If I check this out by going to the second tab and back to the first tab, it doesn't fit on one page. I'm gonna double, I'm gonna, this one I should have named, I should call comparative balance sheet. I'm gonna go to this one, double click on it and say, compare prior year balance sheet, something like that. And then I'll make this a little bit smaller again and we'll do the same thing. I'll try to take everything in this row and bring it on over to the next and I'll get rid of column A all together. We don't need you column A. We don't need you. Get out of here. But then it makes a new A. A is like, well, if you get rid of me, there'll be a new A that takes my place. And there it is, the new A took its place. Okay, so then we'll save that, awfully dramatic. Closing this back out. We're gonna go, that's number four. Reports two more times, number five. This is our vertical analysis. So I'm gonna go ahead and just export that, create a new worksheet. It's gonna go into the existing workbook. There's the location, okay, export it. Por favor. There it is, maximization, dragging it to the right, checking it, second tab. Looks like it fits on one page. There's the header, vertical analysis. I'll call it B-A-V-A, -A, vertical analysis. And I think that should do it. Let's save it and do one more. Uno Moss reports number six. And then let's export this one. This is another comparative one. I thought he did, I thought he already did two of those. But in any case, let's go ahead and export this one. Just because. So we're gonna we're doing this quite quickly, of course, but that's this is the idea. We're gonna be able to compile these pretty quickly if they're in the memorized reports and then check it, second tab, first tab, gotta fit it to one page, skinnerizing this. I'm gonna pull over the A column to the B so we can remove A. A, you're done, you're done. 
if you get rid of me as the A column, another A will just take my place. So let's try it. Delete. He's right. Another A took its place. I'm going to bring this to the right. This is going to be balance sheet compare comp two. I think I did two of these. I don't know why. We'll keep it like that. The idea is now we have that and I can now use my cute PDF printer to print it all on one page. So I can go to the file tab over here, go to the printing option. I'm going to use my cute PDF printer. It's not just cute, but it's functional. That's why we use it. I didn't hire it for its cuteness. So, you know, it, it, so because now I can print it as a PDF. When I print it, it's going to print the PDF. I can check my file over here. It's got only one tab open. So I'm going to go to the settings and I want to print the entire workbook, print the entire workbook. So there it is. So we've got the summary balance sheet. We've got the balance sheet standard, second half of it, comparative balance sheet that all fits on one page wide. Notice if it had two pages over here that I had to tape together, then that would be a problem. That's gonna, we wanna make it as nice as possible because presentation is half the battle. Not that we're fighting anyone here. It's just that's GI Joe saying, and GI Joe's super cool. Everyone knows that. So you gotta say it's half the battle to, uh, to do because you know, you're giving this to someone and you got to make it look neat and that and that'll that goes a long way. So there it is. So let's go ahead and print it out then. So we'll print it, but it's not actually going to go to a printer, but instead a PDF file, which I'm just going to put, I'm going to put it right here and once again, call it month in, but I'm going to put a dot next to it because I named them all the same thing. And hopefully that won't cause any confusion. I'm going to say save. And then it still went into here. Why does it do that? month in reports month and reports pdf how about that save it there we have it okay and then i'm going to check it out so if we minimize we got now if we're going to give this stuff to a client we could then say okay castle rock construction we could give you each one of these reports uh one by one to you uh, we could attach them to an email, but then you got to open s all these emails. We could put them into a cloud drive, like a OneDrive or, or something, a Dropbox or something like that. Uh, or we could email you the Excel file, but that's not likely that we're going to do to someone unless they want it in that format. Or we can give them the one PDF file in an attachment or in some kind of cloud Dropbox where everything is on one file. Again, it's not quite as nice in terms of the alignment of it and the spacing from the header you could you could adjust that as you export to excel but it's an easy way without having acrobat reader to get every all the reports on one pdf file which again can kind of be impressive to to the recipient uh, oftentimes which like i say the presentation being able to pro provide something that's easily accessible is, is going to go a long way when you're trying to build a relationship with regards to bookkeeping and providing reports and that kind of stuff.